Hey folks, this is Gray here. And are you looking for a portable power station that's small in size but packs big power? Then the EcoFlow River 2 Pro might be your ideal solution. If you haven't seen one of my uh, power station review videos uh, in the past, basically they kind of work like this. Basically we're going to go over the specifications of the uh, power station, uh, then we'll take a close up look at all the inputs and outputs of the device. Uh, we'll talk about some of the pros and cons, we'll do some testing, and then we'll wrap it up with me uh, in this video. Now, that being said, uh, I do have something that I'm going to add to the end of this video. For all the folks that have spent I think this is the fourth video this week, review video specifically, and for all the folks that have uh, take the, taken the time to watch these videos, I had a little something for you that I want to uh, discuss. So stay tuned to the end of this video. Folks, power has never been this easy. Ultimate portability and short-term backup power, you cannot beat the EcoFlow River 2 as an optimal choice. Folks, if you're interested in the EcoFlow Spring Sale, uh, not only the River 2 Pro will be on sale, but a lot of other EcoFlow products. Uh, my link will be down in the description, as well as any discount codes, and I'll also add a pinned comment to this video. All right, folks, so let's kind of go over some of the specifications of the River 2 Pro, as well as the inputs and outputs of the uh, device itself. Some folks are going to ask specifically uh, the parameters of this. It has a sizable 768 watt hour capacity. Uh, and has an 800 watt output range. Now, it also has X-Boost, uh, which is a common term uh, with EcoFlow, uh, which can output up to 1600 watts. This can really technically run the majority or 80% of most home appliances, but I would consider it more on the smaller form factor. It is a lithium iron phosphate battery, which you can get about 3000 cycles out of, which then it drops down to the capacity to about 80%, which basically you can get roughly about 10 years out of this thing, at full capacity. Um, usually I put a graphic on the screen. I'll see if I can find that same graphic to kind of explain that in a little bit more greater detail. Um, but it is a, a very safe battery chemistry. The really neat thing about this device is you can charge this from zero to 100% in about 70 minutes. And also something else that we'll try out in the testing phase is it does have an uninterruptible power supply which runs in about 30 milliseconds. Now some folks may also ask, EcoFlow does offer a five-year warranty on this product so that's awesome so make sure if you do order one of these or any EcoFlow products that you register your product immediately so that you are covered under that five-year warranty. The weight of this unit comes in about 17.2 pounds. All right so now that we kind of went over the specifications let's see about these inputs here and basically they have a button where you can activate it like with most power stations going you can see the screen here it has an input and an output here in watts it tells you how full your battery is and how many hours that'll be left when you're using the product. It is a 60 hertz, that's where it's running at, down here on your AC outlets, and you have four of those AC outlets to use. All right, so moving from there, we're gonna have the USB ports. You have a 100 watt type C and three USB type A's. Uh, and just the same way that you're gonna activate most things, uh, you can push the DC on and off button here, and it's gonna activate these. I've noticed it doesn't have a button this time around, so I'm assuming they're automatically active once you turn the system on. If you want to turn the system off in certain aspects of like, the, let's say you're not using this AC power section down here, you can just hit that button and it's going to turn that off. Again, with the DC. Now, of course, with the DC, you have two barrel connector inputs, as well as I call it the cigarette. They call it an accessory outlet, but I'm just old school, so I call it a cigarette outlet. Basically, where you would take something like this, and input it right into there. That's kind of the basis of what you have on the front outside of the power button here. And of course, if you hold this power button off, you'll see that it said off there and it'll turn the thing off. Same thing by turning it on, it comes back on and gives you all your information. You'll see these numbers move around in the testing phase uh, with inputs and outputs. If we were to plug this in, if this was at zero, uh, that fast charge would kick on and you would see that kind of pushing out there uh, into the inputs. When I was doing it, it ran about anywhere from 600 to 800 watts input. At least that's what I got from it. I should have recorded it, but I just didn't catch it in time. Uh, maybe I'll try to do something after the fact 
uh, when I bring this down when we do some uh, some testing on this unit. You do have a fan on both sides of the unit. One's kind of like an input and an output, basically to keep this fan, uh, to keep the unit itself cooler. Uh, when the fan is at its maximum, I recorded a 62 decibel uh, noise, if that makes, makes any difference to any folks out there. So now to the rear of the unit, and I like smaller units like this because they're just kind of so easy to kind of go over. But of course you have your AC input there, and of course you have your DC input there as well. Basically, you would use this connector here. Same color as you can tell, you can't miss them. I, I use, sometimes I'll go over like Anderson connectors and, and go through all the specifics, but it seems people get really confused with that. But basically, it's just to simplify the things. As you can see, this matches up with that, just like any uh, power adapter would match up with that. So there's your kind of your two inputs there. This is for DC, and then of course, this is going to be for your AC. Now, this is also where you can plug in your solar. And funny enough, uh, when you look at the specifications on this, you can get up to 1.8 kilowatt hours a day with solar charging. Now there is four ways to charge this device. You can charge this via AC, via your car, via solar, or via USB Type-C. So I wanted to turn the unit around so that you can see the Type-C input. It's kind of like a reverse. You can do input and output through this Type-C charging uh, area right here. One thing you'll notice that's absent from this power station is you don't see a basically a wireless charging thing or any of those additional lights uh, that people you, you'll see on a lot of portable power stations that have a side light, a front light, a rear light, uh, things like that. I like the fact that they're focusing more on, you know, providing power for what you're trying to use this for, be it if it's for a CPAP machine, a small fridge, a, you know, a deep freezer, anything that you're going to need emergency backup power for. Other than that, I think uh, if you have any questions, please put those down in the comments themselves. Again, I try to go over everything as quick as possible uh, in regards to the device uh, and how you can use it. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and test something simple on this, and then we're going to go ahead and try to test its capability by pushing it beyond its limits. All right, so I'm going to test this in a very simple manner. Instead of hooking up a bunch of things that I know that this unit can run, uh, being that it's an 800-watt uh, unit, I'm going to use a portable heater. When this heater is maxed out, at high on the fan and on the heat, it can reach uh, wattage, it can, it can pull wattage up to 1650 or 1650 watts. So this is really gonna put the EcoFlow River 2 uh, Pro to the test. So we'll start off slow, basically just with the fan on, then we'll go into low, medium, and high on the heat, and we'll see how the unit reacts. Then I'm gonna put the fan back on and we'll show you how the uninterruptible power supply works as well. All right, so to be transparent, as you can see, the unit is plugged in. Everything on the heater is either off or in the minimum section there. Everything is on the low form factor. We're going to go ahead and turn the AC power on. That's going to bring that on. As you can see, the screen there, there's going to be no input or output because it's not plugged into the wall at the moment. And then we're going to go ahead and turn just the fan on and see how that reacts to the flow of this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up a little bit right here. You can hear that fan kick on. You can see the output wattage is about 23 watts. Now all this is blowing is cool air. The heat is not on at the moment. It is just on the fan. So as you can see there, if I ran this fan at 23 watts, I would get 21 hours running this fan. So let's say if I was using this in a small room or an area where I wanted to cool off, I could double this as a fan outside of just a heater. And I would get roughly about 21 hours on it. All right, so let's make my life uncomfortable and we're gonna go ahead and turn the heater on into its low position. We'll see how it goes. The heater is now on. As you can see, that's up to 829 watts. That's just running it on low. The unit is rated for 800 watts. It did handle that peak very, very, very well. What I mean by peak is that surge, that surge of power that came from the heater itself, and the unit did not cut off or shoot me an error code. So right now the heater is running in low mode, and it is drawing 700 and 87 watts as it settled down. As you can see there, that tells you how many minutes you'll have. So if you needed to heat up a room, you would have 44 minutes. 
using this unit at its capacity. Remember, it's an 800 watt unit, so it's handling the wattage, but it's also a 768 watt hour portable power station. Now we're gonna go ahead and try to get it to fail and push it beyond its limits. I'm gonna to go to high, switch that over, and we'll see how the EcoFlow River 2 Pro reacts to it. All right, now it's in the high mode, and I'm gonna slowly turn this dial up. As you can see, it's up to 900 watts. Still performing very, very well, way beyond its limitations. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this higher. Basically, I'm just slowly turning this dial until it's max position. And you'll see that go higher and higher. You have to give this little guy credit. It's way over what it's rated and it's doing very, very well. All right, so that's where we're at right now. It's in its max position and in high. And it seems like the unit has settled down around a little over 800 watts. So what impresses me the most is a lot of units out there, you've seen me do reviews on these in the past, will throw error codes, do all kinds of crazy stuff when it reaches beyond its max. So the surge on this can reach up to 1600 watts, or basically it's super boost mode, I think is what it's called, if I recall that correctly, X boost, X boost mode, up to 1600 watts of surge. Now I can show you that by turning this thing off. I'm gonna turn it all the way off and then I'm gonna turn it back on and you'll see the surge on the screen. 1,900, as you saw that surge, it hit over 1,000 watts. To me, that's a good solid battery management system. The unit itself is definitely working to keep up with everything. And again, I think that's phenomenal. All right, so let's do the next test and plug this thing in. You'll see input and output on the screen there. Because right now we have no input because it's not plugged into the system. And then we'll, do, we'll see how fast it switches over if we have any issues with the UPS system. Okay, I just plugged the power in. So we're on grid power now. The heater is in the off position. You see that there's no output. And you see there, that's what I meant about the rapid charging. It reached almost at 900 watts. And you can see it kind of fluctuating there as it's receiving power from the grid. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn it back on fan mode right here so that you can see an input and an output mode. Our AC is on. We'll go ahead and get the fan going. You can probably hear that sound there. Like I said, it's pulling about 20 some watts out of there. Again, it's on fan mode. And roughly, it's not fully maxed out, but you can see it's kind of getting close there. That's just the, uh, the push of the fan itself from the little portable heater unit. We'll go ahead and turn the fan all the way up. And it's kind of metering right around 21 watts. So if I turn the heater on low, let's see where it goes. Let's see if we can get it to throw an error code or not. 900 watts, 1000 watts. That's not bad, folks. Remember, again, it's rated at 800 watts. So we have over almost 1200 watts, 1150, 1160 watts coming in. It's trying to compensate for the power going in and out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it from the grid and you'll see that there'll be no input power and we'll see how this unit works, how the UPS works, being that it's being stressed out above what it's rated. There. The heater never stopped, still powered on. It's still pushing almost to its max. That UPS or uninterruptible power supply worked flawlessly, absolutely flawlessly. There you go, folks. So if you're looking for something that's compact, portable, and can withstand the test of beyond its limitations, 
and continuously operate flawlessly, the River 2 Pro might be an option for you folks. That is the EcoFlow River 2 Pro folks. Very, very surprised that we didn't run into any issues, no overloads or anything like that. Now I can probably push this thing to overload and what will happen is you'll get an overload protection right here and this will shut off. Basically all you do is turn something like this off to reset it. You'll push this back on, the unit will reset itself and then you can turn whatever that you have using and just back it off a bit. Anyways, I'm burning up in here with this heater. So let's get back to me and wrap this video up. All right, so that's gonna go ahead and complete this review of the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. Uh, really looking forward to hearing your thoughts. I know some of these power stations can be out of people's price range depending on the size that you're looking for. So here's my advice to you folks out there when you're looking for a power station for, uh, for emergencies. Find out what you need it for. If it's something that's going to be small, let's say like small appliances, CPAP machines, uh, and things like that, you might want to go on a smaller scale. If you're looking something for in the mid-range for, you know, major appliances like, you know, let's say your refrigerator, uh, your deep freezers, and all that stuff like that, you want to look at the watt hours and the capability of these units. Um, and then, of course, if you're looking for something to kind of go on multiple appliances or something more of not say your entire home, but something on the larger, grander scale, that's when you're really going to spend the big bucks. And always, 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 if it's not me, find someone that has a big sale going on, be it EcoFlow or other companies like that, will be very beneficial to you folks out there. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll be going over sometime this year. Uh, I have four or five of these EcoFlows that go out over throughout the year. And uh, one of them is a beast, and uh, they will be having a sale on that. So stay tuned for that as well. So what I've decided to do for all the viewers that have taken the time to watch all these review videos that I put out this week, I'm going to do something special for you. I'm not going to say exactly what, uh, but not this Monday's live stream, because this Monday will be on Rudy's channel. The following Monday will be on my channel. So stay tuned to that live stream, because everyone who watched these videos and left a comment will be in for a surprise. Other than that, folks, please have a great weekend. Stay safe out there. God bless you all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And as always, remember, folks, you are not alone.